Okay, I think it's my turn now. Okay, 531. Um, I'm not from window company. <laughs> okay, I'm an artist. And by the way, it's yeah, a good, 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 good company, though, because uh, I made a lecture in Portugal just before this, and they sponsored my exhibition. And uh, they are a good sponsor, too. So if you have a pro problem with the money, you should, you should go to that wind company. Okay. Anyway, um, we are just usually set. We have done the rule. And uh, because um, I'm wearing the same shirts all the time, people think I'm wearing the same shirts all the time, no? But actually, I have more than 100. So it's clean, don't worry about it. And my wife is in red. This is my family. Four colors. And that is why I'm using this slide at the beginning of my every lecture, is that uh, this is where my idea is coming from. You know, there's one uh, interesting question came up when I was making a lecture at the Harvard. One very clever student asked me, uh, how did you get such much, such extensive knowledge about children? What book I should I read? And uh, I asked him, you know, uh, do you have a girlfriend? I think you have a girlfriend, I know you. Yes, I do. And uh, I, I heard you are going to get married. Yes, we are. And you're going to have a baby. And do you understand? You know, people are trying to get answer from a magazine, web, maybe from lecture like this. But you should know these things are already obsolete, the past. Okay? But this one thing never changes quality. You know, it's about human life. You know, uh, as we feed children, to make next generation. Uh, always we make nest for next generation. Eventually, you know, our nest became complicated. But it's a uh, basic of our life. So always we talk about you know, our personal life at the beginning. And eventually, we got to talk about architecture. You know, today, I have just only one, only one hour. I lost already three minutes already. So, uh, I can't show everything because I have more than uh, 250 buildings completed. It's uh, quite a lot. So I start from my lecture from my kindergarten. And uh, you do, how many people know about my kindergarten, donuts kindergarten? Could you raise your hand? How much percent? Okay, it's about 50-50. Uh, so still I need to talk about Fuji kindergarten. So, you know, if you know about Fuji kindergarten, okay, uh, uh, please laugh when I make a joke, because I make the same joke as uh, usual time, okay? So, you know, this is the kindergarten before the construction. The owner said, then I want you to redesign a kindergarten. But uh, I like this an obsolete feeling. It's awful design. It's leaking all over the place. But I said, you know, so, so external, I understand that so much green. I said, okay, don't worry about it. Just the issue, you are okay here. So you don't need, you are new architecture. He really got upset. So he explained all the leaking points. Eventually he convinced me so that I can design an architecture. And then before that, you know, um, he went, he learned about this, my old project. This is quite an early project, it's called Rule House. Many people might know about it, you know? And the people having time on top of the roof. This is quite an old project, more than, I think, 25 years ago. And this is where the idea is coming from. You know, kids love to make circles, you know? It's, uh, again, in genetic memory, written in your ribocortex, cortex. So naturally they do it. So we made a circle. So the kids keep running around. And uh, if they don't know the end, they keep running around all day long. And they sleep quite well after they go home. 
So we made this. And, um, and the, but there are a few trees on the way. So we had to keep it. But the keeping tree is not easy. Because uh, trees, roots, as, uh, is usually as big as the crown of the tree. So this is a diagram we used at the beginning. You know, we have to make sure we don't cut the roots. So we did, we did some uh, research under the ground. And then we put columns randomly. So you can see that, that this is a, showing column positions, beam positions. So it's not the radial. We place the column as we don't disturb the tree. And also we don't disturb the uh, movement of the kids. And uh, we built this. And uh, originally, you know, kindergarten teacher said, you know, I want uh, a kindergarten. I want a uh, kindergarten looking like a roof house for 500, 500 kids. And you can see the rooftop doesn't have a handrail. Okay. And he said, uh, I don't want a handrail neither. Well, it's impossible. And, uh, and if kids fall off, you have to go to court. But he said, how about having a net, having, having, uh, having on the edge, having a net on the edge of the roof, so that we can catch the children falling off. Are you serious? And, uh, and somehow he convinced me eventually. So I made the drawings showing the net sticking out from the edge. And I went to city hall. And uh, people in city hall looked at me. Are you insane? So I had to go back to kindergarten. And uh, they said, I'm crazy. And then the owner said, oh, no, 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 I'm serious. So go back there. And then he made a phone call. And uh, I found an amazing thing. You know, all the people in the city hall are from this kindergarten. They are trained to listen to principal from this age. Eventually grown up, they are over 40 years old. They, now they are the decision makers. And the principal called hey, could you make sure there is no hundred on the edge? <laughs> they are listening. So now, and I realized that they are more powerful. He is much more powerful than mayor because there is no election. The family has been running this kingdom for more than 70 years. So of course, we couldn't uh, take that uh, uh, hundred out from the edge, but we could keep uh, the hundred out around the tree. So we can see the some ropes, but the, the rope is nothing to do with the kids. You get the more, and more, and more, and more. 70, 40 trees. You can see the boy on, and on the tree. The boy rubs the tree, so he's eating the tree. And he insisted, I don't want any handrail, but I said, this is it. Regulation. Gap has to be 10 centimeter. If that is less than 10 centimeter, they put their hand in and they can't pull the hand out. And they, if you uh, get it bigger than 10 centimeter, they put their head in and they can't get out. So, and this is again, you can't change anything. But he said, Oh, at the end, oh, it's not so bad. And the monkeys in zoo, feeding time. And it's looking nice, huh? And the way we designed this kindergarten, you know, the school was original, was quite unusual. People think, wow, Japan is an amazing place. You can do whatever we want. But actually, when I was just 2006, you know, when we designed, actually 2005, we designed. Uh, the uh, kindergarten is quite unique. Actually, the room saying in you know, a room has to be square, you have to have a wall between the classrooms. And they shouldn't put the kids on top of the roof, of course. But, you know, principal said, you know, we want the kids on top. And uh, I want the ceiling to be lower so you can see the kids on top. 
you know, we don't want to see the ceiling. If you're too high, you don't see the kids. And then we don't want to have any wall between the classroom. And, uh, you know, of, of course, we got uh, complaints from, uh, you know, authorities. You know, you are not following guidelines. But he said, well, you know, if you don't like it, you have to fire me. And he's so tough guy, you know, he used to run for Tokyo governor. His strong position too. So, you know, they can't complain to the owner. So they, they, they try to blame uh, weak people, us. They, they were blaming me. And but everything get changed. 2011, you know, suddenly we got a call from government where they used to complain. Something wonderful happened. You know, OECD and UNESCO uh, tried to find the best school building in the world because they think uh, education is the base for the world peace. So there are 166 submissions as a re to represent countries we didn't know anything about. They said, I mean, the, uh, you know, mystery said, and this is selected as the best of the best of the world. Wonderful, you know. The interesting about the Japanese government is that they don't listen to Korean, they don't listen to Chinese, maybe they don't listen to Indonesian, they don't listen to Japanese, but they listen to American, Europeans. They said, wonderful. And so we went to Paris and we got the prize with uh, delegates. And suddenly we got the uh, minister prize, personally. And then my, my, my wife, Yui Tezuka, became the one to set up a new standard for the kindergarten. It's wonderful. Now it's, things get much easier. If I want to try something new, just uh, I talk to my wife over the dinner. I want this. He said, yes. And she writes something. She writes something. And now I understand the reason why people want to be politician. So much power. So you can see now. Actually, there's no interesting thing about, there's interesting about this kind of thing. There's no praying to. You know, they pray with architectures. Okay? And this recognition place, you know, uh, they made in different kinds of water taps. One is normal one, as one is uh, just uh, spraying water to friends in this expo. They shower on the back. And this boy is not washing his boots, he's uh, putting water into the boots. What? It's okay. It's okay. Okay, and uh, this is very important slide. As you can see, there is no boundary between classrooms. And also, the sliding door opens, and two thirds of each year, it's completely open like this. And uh, this school became so popular. There are about uh, 40,000 visitors from outside of Japan, no, each year, not five, yeah. It's about, yeah, four, it, sorry, it's just uh, 4,000 visitors from outside Japan each year, 40,000 inside Japan. So it became quite a touristic spot. And of course, there are so many specialists. And one of the German professors, serious professor, came. Look at this, it's so open. And if it rains, kids get wet, what would you do? And principal said, Oh, in, in Japan, usually kids change when they get wet. Okay, but still kids might get wet. Oh, in Japan, usually kids are waterproofed, so you can wash them clean. It's a quite good point. And uh, so you can see, you know, sorry, sorry, I missed the point. And also there's one more thing I need to talk about. You know, there is no boundary between the classroom, so noise comes from the next classroom. How would you keep the concentration? And then I need to show you these slides. <laughs> this is not Japan. Actually, this is uh, Bali Island. And uh, we go to, I, I go to Bali quite often, almost every year. And it's a cage dancing. And you can hear background noise, okay, beep. Okay, this is very important. 
Actually, when I was there, I wasn't listening to the beep. Actually, nobody is listening to that noise. It's just we are enjoying the ritual. And then uh, I played that music back in Japan. I realized so much noise. I saw something wrong with my recording device. And the scientist who invited me told me, well, the noise has been there all the time, but your brain canceled it. And your body is doing exactly the same. You can't hear your vascular noise, you know, you know, the breathing noise, you know, cardiovascular system, because your, your brain canceled it inside the brain as a humation. But if you, okay, uh, uh, if you dive under the water, yeah, you can hear body noise. You get disconnected from the rest of the world. And uh, so this noise is the same. We are grown, we are raised in jungle. So we are meant to have this kind of background noise. So, you know, but if you go back to Tokyo, you are disconnected from natural environment. They, then you, your noise cancelling system stops. And now just we got suspect. And maybe it's just, uh, you know, modern architecture, the cause of main autism, the um, psychological disorder. So there are so many papers about it. You know, today is not about uh, a pedagogical con you know, conference, so I don't go into details, but this is a paper I wrote for United Nations. I, uh, they asked me to write about it. What is actually called Nostalgic Future? I predicted the title of this lecture, you know, in 2016. You know, I'm like an oracle, okay? And then this is a medical report. You know, when you put a uh, uh, newborn baby into a quiet room, they start having psycho disorder when they leave that hospital because they lose the opportunity to uh, develop their noise cancer system when they are small. So noise is very important. So my point is, it's quite important to keep them in the open space. So they have lots of background noise. And uh, later, you know, if you make good question, you get to get to do this book. I brought so many books, okay? And you can see the kids are waterproof. You don't melt, you know? They are not like a watch, okay? And this is how they did by the classrooms. And uh, they were supposed to help teacher. They don't work. They don't work. <clears throat> the Christmas time. And this is washing, you know, hand washing place. It's just like a well, they talk each other. <clears throat> Christmas time. And uh, a monkey trying to fish another monkey. And this is where Santa Claus comes down Christmas time. They're acting like a chimney. There are 18 skylights. And uh, unfortunately, you know, I made a mistake. I designed this, uh, you know, chimney, like a skylight for Japanese Santa Claus. One day they got a very good looking American Santa Claus. He's stuck in the frame. Yes, he needs to lose weight. So I shouldn't say that, okay. <laughs> okay, and there are many uh, strings, two towns light. Instead of using remote control, they think it's a much better way to uh, teach about the consciousness, about the environment. And uh, this is a movement of a boy from 10 past nine to 30 past nine. Within 20 minutes, he moves so much. This is not exactly a small place. You know, actually he made uh, 6,000 meters, six kilometers before lunchtime. But actually he's not special. Actually the average is 4,000 meters. So it's, uh, it's about eight times, usually eight times of the average movement of the kid in the morning. So there are many programs made for these kids, and the kids are running all over the place. And they are acting like a sheep released from the cage. You see how they get out of the cage. Run, huh? And there are many copies of this kid that are there. Or, you know, some China, some... Uh, 
子供たちなんでこんなに走るかっていうとね、子供ってね、こういうふうに止まりのないところを走るのが大好きなんですよね。だこの屋根の上も内側に向かってすり鉢状に傾いてるんですね。そうすると何がいいかっていうと、ほら、早く走ってもなんかすごい上達感じしないでしょ。さっきみたいな。なんか走りたくなるんですよ。子供たちはね、それを感じるんですよね。なんかこうしなさいって言わないんだけど、走りたくなる。So, we can do what we want. We put、uh, many floors. You know, we are supposed to have three meters of ceiling now, just we can put as many floors as I want. So, we put seven floors within five meters. And then we put our kids to test the safety. And he bumped his head on the, on the ceiling. It's okay, he's my son. He's resilient. He's trying to see if it's safe to jump off. In these days, we don't, they don't have、uh, danger, but they need small doses of danger to learn things.、Uh, awful traffic in Tokyo. And he's trying to jump off. And、uh, looks like she's trying to help him, but actually he's try, he's try, she's trying to drag him down. But anyway, and it's this thing, you know, there's no furniture inside. My daughter, and she's、uh, now just a、uh, third year of university. Okay, then one more school I should show you. This is selected as、uh, the best school building in the Water Access Festival a long time ago. And、uh, I didn't want to have any dead end, so we made the school looking like umbrella, keep, kids keep running around. And it's、uh, very simple. But the nice thing about this、uh, planning is that、uh, you can locate function as you want. If you're square, you can go for X, Y, and Z. But here, you can put、uh, you know, circles in any direction. s、so、I found it's working extremely well. And、uh, this is a pool because there's no edge. You know, they don't get drowned, just then you know, they get into the deeper place eventually. Okay. And、uh, okay, now just a bit serious project. You know, there's one thing quite common between Indonesia and Japan. You know, 10% of the big earthquake over the eight, level nine, magnitude eight, over eight, magnitude eight, happening in Indonesia. You got the big correction of the earthquake. And we got, Japan got the second biggest correction of earthquake. So in 2011, we got the level nine, level nine means、uh, you know,、uh, magnitude nine earthquake. It's quite a huge earthquake. And that tsunami was at 20 meters tall in the wash town. And this,、uh, there's a lady、uh, warning people you should leave the town, leave the town. And she died.、Uh, she, she was holding Mike to the death. And there's one as a hero. He was saying, You should come to my temple. And there's a promenade like this. This is 400 years old, the promenade. And then wash water came up a few kilometers up from the coastline. He reached the water, reached there. Old temple. So, saying, you know, if you go to old temple, you know, you get, your life gets saved because the temple has been there. From the previous earthquake. And then all three died. And、uh, these trees were planted after last big tsunami. Last tsunami was 1611. This time, tsunami was 2011. So, ex- so exactly 400 years. Tsunami caused like a clockwork. So people sh- were supposed to know about it. And they said, okay, we use these trees. We chop this off. Very tall tree, 330、uh, meters to 40 meters tall. And they use a big、uh, 
And then also the, uh, the timber is uh, not perfect. The wood baker's nest, very heavy, 600 by 600. So this uh, solid wood, very heavy. And we use the old uh, timber technique. Because in Japan, uh, there are many temples, you know, exceeding 1,000 years. So, and actually this belongs to temple, this kindergarten belongs to temple, so we made uh, with the old way. So kids are back, always they do the same kind of things. Huh? <laughs> so, this column is not just a column telling a story. If big earthquake comes, you have to come to me. This is the high ground, and your life will be saved. I was killed by tsunami in 2011, but I was planted 1611. So 1611, 2011, next tsunami is going to 2411. We are quite sure. So now this is how problem is looking like. So 400 years from now, and there will be a nice, beautiful promenade. And then I go back there and I get a new project. And I want to come to look at my new project, 2411. Anyway, okay, a few more projects. Sorry, just, uh, I don't have much time. You know, this is a uh, you know, uh, pavilion for the kids. It's a uh, traditional Japanese joinery. And the net inside, and actually joined with uh, our work by artists. We work together. You can see that the kids are so happy inside. You know, in this kind of occasion, you don't need to tell them what they should do. Always we try to manipulate the, in their spontaneous movement. Do you know spontaneous movement? You don't need to tell them what they should do. So they get in, they jump in. Once you put your kids, kids never get out. But this is the best picture, you can see. Really nice. Always father is tired. And then my wife and my son, he's so cute. But not anymore. He's like this. <laughs> Daddy, like this. Okay. I'm going to show a few churches very quickly. And now we design the process of the churches and they, they don't want to use uh, luxurious material. So smaller piece is cheaper. So I said, okay. And we made a collection of timbers. You know, a nice thing about Japan is that they go, still we have very good craftsmanship. They used about 2,000 pieces of timbers putting it together. So extremely beautiful. And... Uh, and this absorbs the sound, also disperses the sound, and nice sound environment. By the way, this, uh, this, uh, this pasta is fake. He's not real pasta, he's Peter Cook. He's pre pretending to be a uh, pasta. He's a funny guy. Do you know Peter Cook? He's an accurate guy. You should invite him, he's a funny guy. And this is how the, the wall is looking like. And uh, as I told, you know, you know, our office uh, uh, pursue happiness. So this is the one thing I'm very much proud of. You know, there are eight couples happen uh, made in our office in a small in a small office. You know, so if you want to find a mate, you should come to my office. And uh, also, I made a, a couple as uh, the team. So I told them. If you don't finish the work on time, you won't have a wedding. So they worked very hard to complete the project. And uh, so, you know, in the after dark, light is very low and the space becomes dark. So light goes up from, the, from people. In daytime, light comes from, come, come down from the sky. And also, I really concerned about uh, acoustic. So I spend a long time to pursue acoustics. So I play piano. It's not good enough, huh? but I spend a long time. Anyway, so just I show some uh, churches. I don't have time to explain. 
you know, light comes down just exactly, you know, uh, 11 o'clock. That's the time of mass. Oh, well, interesting. This is uh, the pool for baptism. You know, but the people think this is a kind of black stone. So you don't need to tell them, you know, you have to get the baptism. They baptize by themselves. As one, you know, this is a church where they want to go back to basics. This is Egypt, the Egyptian temple. And this student was called, was happened to be, you know, Maria. So he wanted kind of, you know, beef, uh, the pray feeding before Catholic. So this is the deep, and this is the wall, and I said, Masonry. Sorry, I'm running the slides so quickly because I did one project. I want to spend more time. If you come to Japan, I show you around. Quite a number of projects, and the another one, you know, we do uh, quite a number of timber building, and uh, this area get uh, uh, this uh, town has a very famous uh, factory. This factory is 150 years old. This first modern factory in Asia, and also this is a place first labor law was made. They can they allow to work only seven and a half hours per day. You know, and also they had a weekend all the time. So you know they were their working conditions a bit as in my office. And they said, you know, I want to design, I want you to design chamber of commerce and industry. And also I want you to represent this past and also future. So I made this model. This is origami kind of structure. You know, it's mesh, but if you make a proper shape. It become a very strong like this, so marriage between the old time and new time. And at this time, it old uh, facade. From our side, Millennium Falcon. So the transition from past to future. You get in, and inside, you know, the roof shape is uh, forming a space, but also it mean, has meaning of a structure. The nice characteristics. In a usually this kind of facility is closed off, but the, the, this facility is designed like a market to so come in and also mesh or structure. And these days uh, there are many black tissues attached onto steel, but this is 100% pure, you know, um, timber building. And I'm quite a fundamentalistic about uh, timber structure. You can see, you know, these deep architectures are uh, quite uh, extensive from the small detail to structure. That's the nice thing about timber. There's no disconnection, discontinuity. Okay. Now it's still, I'm showing this picture. These are kids too. And now I'm not just only, I'm, I'm not just only architect. I run a kids museum. And uh, one of the you know, investors said, uh, oh, I want to start a kids' museum. Could you design it? I said, I don't like kids' museum. Because if you go to kids' museum, children museum, you put kids in a room, and the parents go somewhere, and we come back. So they, uh, we get disconnected from the kids. And the uh, museum become like uh, after school. I don't like that. So I said, uh, how about make a zoo instead of a kindergarten. No, instead, sorry, instead of a museum. You know, okay, but you don't have money? But uh, no, 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 you don't need to worry about the animals. You have animals in front. You know, you know rhinos and uh, zebras, these are expensive, lions. The kids are free. So we put the kids inside a dish and the parents look at the kids from outside. So this is how the museum looks like. You know, quite a large dish, it's a 25 meter diameter and a very soft surface. And we work with, uh, you know, uh, our students, university students. And this is what this movement. You know, you don't need to tell them what they should do. You know, you know, 
people try to explain the concept, lack tissue. You know, I empire the concept. And the mother love it. Okay. Usually, people don't usually run with kimono, but she does. And the best part is not yet. This is the best part. And also, we invite you know, musicians. We got the time of the corona, you know, um, people couldn't play the music, so you invite the Tokyo Film Orchestra. People think the kids don't like uh, classic music, but actually I found out the kids don't like numbers on seat. But the, in this kind of environment, you know, this boy come to front, and the people take uh, different forms. My wife is sleeping, and uh, the, the people enjoying a different uh, posture. And uh, and uh, you know, you don't tell them what they should do. I think I need to speed up a little. I think, sorry. Uh, I can speed up now. And, uh, you know, this is not artwork, you know. We walk with the kids. And by the way, there's a copy made in China recently. This is original, you know. They copied my name. This is a co copy the name of the museum. But this is original. Anyway. Um, the kids, but you don't, again, we don't tell them what they should do next. A nice thing about this uh, museum is that they, we allow them what they are not allowed to do usually. And so we give them a toilet roll, a pool, and the father is happy. You can see how happy he is. I think this is architecture, okay? A disaster. We, used to, we are supposed to do that every week, but my curator said it's impossible, we die. I said one more thing, you know, I tell you, you know, uh, and this is a church, it's a boring project. This is also got the, uh, you know, uh, best prize for, uh, uh, best prize for, you know, uh, religious architecture at the World Architecture Festival. And I drew this picture. This is not a computer aided drawing. You know, this, uh, I depicted this drawing one by one, six meter, six meter dots, and the drawing is 56 meter wide. And then I drew in an Eden garden where Adam and Eve exiled. This is based on the story of university. So, you know, this is looking like a computer graphics. It's not actually, you know, the between the glass. And it's just a t timber panel. We, of course, we had to use machine, but basically based on my drawing. And you can see that space is filled with lights. You know, these days, people think decoration is bad. But now that I'm thinking that it's more important to have this kind of feeling. Actually, you know, I'm an architect. Also, I do paintings. I do watercolors. I publish watercolors. And painting is also important. So this is architecture. And also, this is also water. That's a wall painting, too, you know. It's a light wall painting of the lights. It's not computer graphics again. You can see the light coming through and telling the story of Eden Garden. And then you don't need to score to play piano. And wherever you go, light follows. And uh, light spread like this, dispersed, because light is not just particle. Energy dispersed, becomes soft because of it's so small, small holes. And as I show one more slide, you know, this, uh, this is the old, old, old project. I think you might know about this, this is 2004, you know, Natural Science Museum designed to be in the deepest snow in the world. And we have big window in the winter, one week, and uh, two weeks, the crevice. If you're caught in the crevice, you have to wait until May to come out. And uh, we get the, you know, our concern from curator. 
Are you sure this window is okay? I said, it's calculated. Then they called me again. Are you sure? So I called the structure engineer. He said, uh, I think it's okay. So I told them, structure engineer said it's okay. And then they called me again, scary. But I found it's nice, you know, just, just before the snow reached the top, nice line of the light come down. It became blue. We call the light as a tadao ando light. Okay, now this is the important project. It's India. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's close to, you know, border. Very deep in Himalayan mountain. And about 500 kilometers from the closest airport. 500 kilometers, the long distance. And uh, this is where located. And we got a call from this community. I need you to design a new school. That old school got the uh, earthquake and it's the building tilting down. And we need to have a durable architecture. And we have 126 kids waiting, but it's really far away, okay? And you have to go through this kind of road, very tough passage. And this monk actually, you know, was born in toilet, and then he happened to be very clever. And when he grown up, and he started representing Dalai Lama. Now he went back to, you know, Tawang, this area, and then he wanted to start orphanage. And he started 17 orphanage 20 years ago. And, but he said, I need a building. So I asked, uh, and I asked him, you know, how much money do you have? He said, zero. So we made drawings for them so they can raise the money. So I just that I thought well, our road finished, but they said, oh, now it's my money is coming and you have to work on. So this is where they stay. And there's a nice movie about them. You can look at this later, you know. Uh, sorry, I don't have time to explain. But the, usually these kids are having a tremendous problem because they are from harsh environment. Okay? And this is uh, how monk talk to kids. See, this girl is uh, trying to take care of small kids. This is how they study. And then the, this is guys asking to take care of our old son. And I, I think you need to listen to this comment. My most difficult job is when and how to accept new kids. When I say yes, it means equally say I will save this kid's life. When I say no, is about saying no is equal now, to you know, saying no. I, I don't want to save this boy, or I cannot save this child. Extreme poor. And uh, this yeah, grandmother is saying, uh, I used to have, uh, you know, eight children. Okay, seven died. So I wanted you to take care of my last granddaughter, grandson. And uh, it, you didn't make it in time. He died. So he conducted the funeral. So this is a kind of hush story we are going here, they are going through. And uh, he saying uh, he didn't have childhood because he was abandoned. That he he saying I'm happy guy because I'm having 85 childhood now. I have 85. Now just he has, uh, you know, 106 tickets. Now they invited us. Suddenly they uh, organized a birthday party. First first time, first, first time they seeing a birthday like this. And then birthday party. And a very you know, communicative way to hand over the cake. And my... Um, Portuguese uh, architects are quite happy about it. And uh, running practice, 3,000 meters from sea level. It's very tough. Uh, 30 pass less oxygen. Now, just I've come back to the point. Okay? You know, their education is based on Tibetan Buddhism. Sharing. Okay? And this is presented by this circle. It's called Shunyata, which means zero. And they speak Sanskrit 
uh, 2,000 years ago still. So in, they don't speak Indian, and they speak Sanskrit. <coughs> Sorry. The education is amazing. You know, the uh, first stage, they talk to the kids, like, you know, why the sky is green? The uh, teacher can tell a lie. But the teacher, uh, teacher gives them curiosity for the kids. So it's called seed. Second stage is digestion. Kids start uh, studying by themselves. Third stage, sharing. One, two, three, five, seven, eleven. So then uh, our knowledge becomes wisdom. And so we try to uh, sketch how they study. And I uh, measured. And this is how they give, he's giving a seed to the kids. Digestion, sharing. And after this uh, research on site, and uh, we tested in our university. We tried to measure distance. And we run class like this. Very simple study. So it's not from book, reality. And then we created the interesting shape of table. So you can put together and you can sit like this. To get you know, these days, you know, you start from the box and how you think, how you can put kids in, but this is quite opposite, starting from education. And we did extensive studies and eventually got this kind of plan. So it's purely started generated from education. So very interesting shape, but it's not uh, you know about aesthetics. It's about education. And no, he's explaining. He's explaining this is based on Shunyata. He's a very important person. And uh, because of this, now just uh, Dalai Lama is representing the school now. So, and there's one problem in this region. Because, you know, many people are working for road construction, uh, they start using a concrete building, making concrete building. But this is where how they used to live. The problem with this concrete building is that there is no steel bar. Steel bar is very expensive. So very little amount of steel bar. So it doesn't stand against the next earthquake, definitely. You know, Himalaya is a, a kind of fault line. This is an old building, okay? But it is stood against the last earthquake. Said, okay, we can use local technique. This building is 500 years old. You know, as our colleague explained, stone is a better way to construct. So, you know, we put a con a, a, a stone. Uh, on the both sides, we, we institute uh, a local concrete so that they don't need to use steel bar. And we're going to use uh, this kind of geometry, timbers, and then we use only small local timbers. And I, I found that the fan shape is good because if the square you have to span long distance, fan shape, you can use uh, very small timbers like this. this. So, you know, if you, okay. Okay. And there's a few more projects, uh, sorry. In Europe, uh, we do work on the another uh, 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 flow of the air because uh, you know, greenhouse get hot and then the suck, and then if you up the ceiling, sucks the air up from the space underneath so of uh, E, big E. And also we are trying to make combination of small houses, you know, big house of gymnasium, small house, at the media size for classroom, and then you know, small, very small for meeting room, and then very, very small for the dogs and the cats. So we make this kind of project in Portugal. Sorry, I don't have explained, uh, time to explain. This is another one in the, I can tell you what it is, but I can guess. And uh, we have to use a roof, we have to keep the roof, but it's a 
we are making oasis. It's about, uh, it's again about reforestation. We are making oasis, and also we are trying to make uh, upside down oasis inside a building. Actually, this is a student facility. It's not looking like a schoolroom, right? But we are trying to make uh, circles. And on the middle, we have, I'm going to introduce my own you know, play museum. And uh, just you need to, you know, this, uh, these are mirrors to reflect the green space outside. Because in bringing light from outside, it's too hot. Because temperature goes down to 50, goes up to 58 in, in summer. Anyway, now it's the, you know, I, I need to do the PL, you know. Now it's the, you can look into, you know, my TV program. It's available. So if you Google opening new doors for children's futures, Tezuka, you know, you, you, uh, you, know, you know, you get the distribution around 30 minutes, so you don't need to listen to my uh, lecture. Maybe you can, you can take a picture of this, you know, opening new doors for children's futures. And it's showing another as a project, okay? That's then I need to learn this uh, movie. Uh, this house was built uh, uh, 14 years ago when my daughter was born. This site is quite long uh, towards the south and north, and the view is north side. So we try to let the light in from the south, so we make the solar shape and the sunlight comes through the skylight. The original idea for this house is every space is one put together. And so uh, we have a long table like this. Everything happens around this table. Uh, we like to design architecture for permanence. Of course, there is no permanence, but it's, I would say, continuity. And uh, of course, we can design this green house. But the, but the house is not just about style, you know? The, the living style changes. This is a place to raise children. It's a nest, not a uh, design. Just recently, we made a, a children's rooms. Yeah, the thing is, um, we're supposed to have only one bedroom, so we had to divide into three. And when we got the first child, uh, one of my friends gave me a good comment. You know, you are going through the most beautiful moment of your life. And the time will last 10 years, and the time will never come back. And I think as the, uh, we are feeling the first uh, 10 years, you know, how it's changed. And my son is 11 years old. You know, it's at the time we have to separate the rooms for each member. So that's the first step of separation. But still, it's home. No. So we try to divide the rooms into uh, three pieces uh, with uh, just the punches. But you know, uh, there are quite nice uh, tricks between rooms because it's made of furniture. Uh, we can make a small window, you know, so give me just wall thing. So still the conversation is going on. So just, uh, uh, just we try to maintain bit of uh, you know, privacy and also a bit of communication all the time. We like to design a house uh, capable of carrying memories. You know, usually uh, we have to design, you know, bedrooms for family members. And uh, we happen to have just only one bedroom, so we have to share everything. But we realize it's good for family. You know, in the modern society, always there is separation between the family members. So, uh, but I remember, maybe it's the old Japanese member, and uh, we used to share space in Japan's house. You know, we used to have only, only paper partitions, and the bedroom uh, was supposed to be living room in the daytime, 
So how do we learn how to help each other, how to talk each other, how we, how we can live together? And that helps、uh, us to live in、uh, Japanese society. The Japan is very small island, so if we don't cope with others, we can live. One is. I thought the house should be the kind of space they learned how to communicate and how to take care of others. The bonding formed in this room is going to last quite a long time. So, what is human being? Some people say the tool made a human being. I don't think it's it's true. You know, I don't be Stanley Kubrick, two thousand one. You know,、um, I think people started making、uh, food, the cooking, and secondly, people started making nest architecture. These are two elements, and when you cook, you share. You don't cook only for yourself from others. Architecture is more, you know. You, if you are professional, it's about sharing. It's you don't do that for yourself. So I think、uh, architecture is sharing, and when you share architecture nicely from others, you find the meaning. To be active. Thank you very much.